Hi guys, and welcome back to another All Heart video. I have been getting a lot of questions from parents asking me about what types of activities they can do at home when their child is only interested in one thing. So let's say, for example, your child is only interested in playing with their cars or their train sets or their dolls or their dinosaurs. What types of activities can you do that are Montessori inspired in order for them to still continue to learn and to be interested in the materials? Because I know it can be very frustrating when you have taken the time to set out all of your activities on your shelves and your child only wants to play with that one particular toy and they completely ignore everything else. So that is what I'm going to show you today. Hopefully this will give you plenty of inspiration and ideas that you can recreate at home with any type of interest that your child has. Let's go ahead and get started. So these are dinosaur pattern block puzzles and they are a classic math manipulative and learning activity. They're really great for spatial awareness, hand and eye coordination and problem solving. They also teach children, I wanna say about two, two and a half to the older children, very good matching skills and sorting skills. They're very good for color recognition, for recognizing geometric shapes, for counting, and also for just beginning math skills in general. Fitting the pieces onto the puzzles also helps develop really fine motor skills, concentration and memory, and their hand and eye coordination. So once they're finished placing all of the geometric shapes on their little puzzle sheet, you can have them count out the shapes or count out the number of similar shapes. Now let's say that you don't have geometric puzzles just like this one, then you can draw out the outline of whatever it is that they're interested in, be that like a doll shape or a car shape, and then just have them fit the pieces, all of the geometric shapes onto the picture that you've outlined, and then it just creates a really nice mosaic picture. So that's another way that you can also utilize these tools. So the second activity is just a puzzle, and I placed two different puzzles in these little baskets on top of a tray. Now, these are really, really good for their fine motor skills and their hand and eye coordination, not to mention they're going to be super engaged if it's a puzzle of things that they're interested in. So in this case, since we're doing a dinosaur segment for a child that absolutely loves dinosaurs, then obviously I'm going to choose a dinosaur puzzle for them to work on. And at the end of that, then you can have them match the dinosaur figure to the dinosaur puzzle as an added activity. So while my son was working on the puzzles, I had my daughter sort all of the different dinosaurs onto the appropriate color. So these are just strips of construction paper that I tried matching as best as I could to the dinosaurs. So it was just a little fun activity for my daughter to be able to color sort all of the different dinosaurs. So this next activity is just a fun matching activity. And as you can see on the cards, they have the picture of the dinosaurs that they are supposed to match. And at the bottom, it also says their name. So it's a really fun way of them to be able to identify each of these dinosaurs and also to be able to identify them by name. So this is a very good language activity. And you could take it one step further and try and have your son or daughter sound out the phonetic sound for the initial letter in each of the different dinosaur names. So my son here was able to identify all of the dinosaurs and now he's just working on memorizing all of their names for the future. So this next activity is also a matching activity, but all I did was write out the names of all of the different fossils onto these little index cards, and my son was able to identify them just by name. So it's a wonderful language activity. It's a wonderful sensory activity because they're able to feel all of these different fossils in their hand. They're able to see all of the different textures and they're able to feel all of the different textures. So it's just a very fun hands-on activity and they're able to learn more about fossils and how they're made. So all of these activities, you're able to take them steps and steps further and really 
dive deeper into all of the interests that your child has for a specific item or topic. So we took that fossil activity and went one step further to teach my children about fossil impressions, which are just prints or indented marks of plants or animals from long ago. The plant or animal will land in mud or silt or sand and then they leave that impression on the soft earth. And over time that plant or animal may disappear but the impression remains. When the imprint hardens, it forms a really interesting mold. So my children were able to recreate all of these different impressions in Play-Doh. So they just had so much fun and they're really looking forward to working on these activities again in the future. So this is another matching activity, but this time we have different dinosaur skulls. They're matching cards. And I also have these dinosaur fossil anatomy cards, which I will get to in just a second. So the first thing that my son was going to do was just identify all of the different skulls with the corresponding matching card. So again, a very good language activity, a very good activity for them to be able to learn all of the names of the dinosaurs and also be able to just really see what a dinosaur school would basically look like. This is also really helping him to be able to learn those descriptive words and be able to identify the different characteristics that made all of these dinosaurs so different underneath. And not only that, but it also helps with problem solving skills because as you can see, my son was having a little bit of trouble being able to identify which dinosaur skull pertained to this dinosaur card. So again, very good for problem solving skills, for being able to analyze the different dinosaurs and their characteristics and shapes in order to be able to match them properly. So they are just learning and building building upon all of these different skills that is that are going to help them with future problem solving activities. So now we can get to the dinosaur fossil anatomy cards. So as you can see here, my son has this beautiful felt anatomy puzzle with all of the different tags for all of the different bones and internal organs. So I thought it would be fun to use all of the different tags that name all of the different bones in the human body and see how they compared with the fossil anatomy bones. And it was just very, very interesting to see that we actually do have a lot of the same bones that dinosaurs do, which is also something that was very interesting to my son when he saw that some of the bones that were on his anatomy sheets were also the types of bones that he has in his body. So he just had a lot of fun being able to identify all of the different bones on this fossil anatomy card. So now we're getting into some of the math activities and these are just dinosaur counting cards and I included all of the little cards on a tray as well as some clothing pins and some little chip markers. Now my daughter was having just a little bit of trouble with this so I just gave her a little loose part so that she was able to identify the corresponding number of dinosaurs that she saw. So she had a lot more fun with the little marker and then my son was able to carry on with the clothespin to find all of the little dinosaurs and mark the correct number. 
So this next activity was a lot of fun and all you need are the little dinosaurs, some paint and a paintbrush. And all you have to do is paint the little footprints off of the dinosaurs and see what types of footprint impressions they make on your paper. And then later on you can kind of see if you can match the dinosaur to their footprint. So my son really felt like an archaeologist with this next activity and this activity is just perfect to be able to teach your children what an archaeologist does and who they are. So an archaeologist is just a person who studies human history and prehistory through the excavation of sites and the analysis of artifacts and other physical remains. So as you can see, my son and daughter just had an absolute blast trying to excavate all of the remains that are inside of this mold and they really wanted to take their time so this is an activity that unfortunately we did not finish today but if anything it taught them a lot of patience and my son was just being very careful with all of the little bones he was finding so since our dinosaurs were pretty dirty from those painting footprint activities we were doing, my daughter wanted to make sure that they were very clean. So this is the perfect practical life activity for your children to be able to do, especially your younger toddlers as they really enjoy playing with water. So all you'll need is a little tray, your dirty dinosaurs, your water, some soap, a sponge, and a dish rag in case some water spills. So you can see that my daughter was just having a blast giving these dinosaurs a very much needed bath. So this next activity is perfect to teach your children all about scale. So all I did was use this paper, write big and small, and make sure that I drew a line right down the middle. And all you have to do is have your children identify which is the bigger of whatever object you're utilizing and which is the smaller one. So this was just a really fun activity for my daughter to do. And again, it's very hands-on as your children are able to really play with the material, pick up the material, and feel the material. So it's very, very good as an added sensory activity as well. So along with this activity, you can also write down on two different sheets of paper how tall the dinosaurs were and how long the dinosaurs were. So we were just utilizing some of these little math blocks that we use for math. And my son was able to count out how many cubes the dinosaurs were as far as length and height. Another math activity you can do with whatever your child is interested in is just a simple math activity. So have them lay out their objects, make sure that you write out the numbers either on a piece of paper or on index cards so that they can associate the objects with the number and make that connection. And then they're able to learn how to add by utilizing some of their favorite things. So here we are just doing a simple addition problem and you'll see that for this next one, it is just a greater than and less than problem. And the final one is just a simple subtraction problem. So you can kind of coordinate wherever your child is and make the activity appropriate for, for them. 
So this next activity is perfect for identifying what the dinosaurs ate, whether they were omnivores, herbivores, or carnivores, and also where they lived. So whether they were land animals, water animals, or air animals. So the loose parts all symbolize a specific thing. So this one meant that he was, that this dinosaur was a herbivore, and that they were a land animal, and this T-Rex is a carnivore and a land animal as well. So you can see the carnivore was symbolized by the little pink loose part. And I also love these little cards because you were able to identify where these dinosaurs actually roam. So you can see that both of these animals were found in North America. So this was another fun art activity to do with the shadows of each of the objects that you are working on. So with the dinosaurs, we were able to cast their shadows onto this piece of white paper and my son was then able to trace the shape of the dinosaur and later color it in. So it was just a lot of fun for them to be able to see the actual shadow of their dinosaur on projected onto this paper and then they were able to nicely trace it out and though they were left with the impression of that dinosaur and they were able to color it in so it was just a really fun art activity for them I hope that you enjoyed all of these different dinosaur activities. Like I said, you can utilize any of your child's interests and create different Montessori activities just like this one. So I really hope that this video was informative. I really hope that this gives you enough inspiration for you to be able to recreate a lot of these activities at home. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe as I do post videos every single week and make sure to ring that notification bell so that you are notified of when I next post a video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys very, very soon.